Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for clicking and watch my video. So I'm guessing everyone's stuck at home and we are all missing the time where we can, you know, go out and take an art class and be creative. So today I'm thinking because everyone is at home and it'll be difficult to get access to brushes, canvases and paint. I thought I would do a video to show you something that you can do at home without break the bank and without the hassle of going out to buy things and also you try to buy something that you don't you're not an expert for. So these are the things you can find very easily easily at home. I promise. So everyone should have a ball pen. Something that's quite thin like this will do is something easy that you find a pen that you like um, that can easily be held. Um, that will be that will be fine. And a clipboard like this, if you don't have one, you can choose to use a hard copy, hard covered book um, and a paper, a piece of paper, a blank paper. This is a sketch paper, but a normal printing paper will do. Any size, A4, A3, depends how big you want your drawing for. And we also need some prop. Um, so today I found a vase and some general cooking material ingredients that people will use in the household an onion and some cloves of garlic um, just to make because this coffee table is black so I want to have a contrast so my props stand out so I have I managed to find a, um, a shopping bag where it's white so I can you know put on the table so they sit nicely on top of it so this, just want to show you, this is something I've done uh, this morning with the ball pen that I have in my hand. So it does come out to be quite okay. So I'm going to take you through the steps that uh, you can, the steps that will take you through to have something done like this. Okay, let's begin. So just before we dive in, I want to show you some small technique that you can use to um, do the shading because the key here is because we don't have the color we will want to create a contrast so we know what's the background what's the foreground what's you know in front of us what's behind us where things are at so with this one you see we use a lot of parallel lines so parallel lines we do try if it's a very long big figure and we want to do the shading we tend we should use parallel lines that are quite long try to make it parallel and something that's curvy which we will be doing you'll be looking at try to go as close to the curve as possible and change the direction of the line as you go along so this will give you create a smooth transition and to make something that's te more textured we will be using thicker line which which require you to press the ball pen harder and we'll use crossover lines like this so it's more textured to reduce the texture to make something smooth shorter lines and we press less not that hard against the paper and we do it we have we're not doing um, perpendicular lines we're doing more parallel and transition it slowly like this so let's start now my vase is almost done it's going to be in this area next bit my onion it's going to be closer to me so and it's a nice shape of a circle and I think it's going to be this big and my garlic is sitting at the bottom of the vase so I'm just going to roughly shape it here right okay so they are about the right 
proportion and about the right composition. So we're looking at a triangle. Everything is going to stay in a triangle. So now we're going to outline the vase. Remember, we're still going to do it lightly, so we are not making any harsh lines, and it's not a definite line. So first, that's where the top is. And that's a little, a little there. Opening. And it's going to be an, an hourglass shape. It's okay that you make different lines and try to round it up. That's okay. The shading will help later to correct it. my vase and to the onion. It is overall around a circle but it's not a regular circle. finalize the detail later. Now the cloves of garlic we've already draft the shape so now we just draw the individual cloves. You can press a little bit harder because we're doing the outline. How are you guys doing? Hope you are all following on. And it is okay that you know you need to pause and have to think about the shape of of the garlic or the things that you choose to draw. Just take your time. And with drawing still life, a lot of the time you just draw what you see. This is quite a nice time for you to think of just focusing on the props instead of let your mind drift to something else. So my garlic is pretty much done like that. Just let your pen follow the image that you're looking at. It should work. And this one at the front. It's a bit hard to draw when it's facing me directly. That's it. That's what it is. Now, these. The onion has the skin of the onion is a bit dry, so it started peeling off. Let it just have a bit of rough line. Yep, that will 
move two, and the other skein is going to move two. And to get rid of the guidelines, we just need to draw that again with more harsh lines. So, and the background, we have a little bit of the the cloth. Um, so how do I want this? So I just wanted to go across, come through. Just want a little bit, so it, it creates a nice contrast. pretty much the whole paint drawing is going to look like. Now the shading bit. So we'll start with the darkest point. Well, the darkest point will be this onion. So we'll start with that. It's a round, it's quite round and quite smooth. So we'll use short and um, parallel lines. So let's go. It's quite curvy, so we will follow the outline. You also have some patterns on its skin. So we're just lightly going to lightly shade it for now and adding the patterns later. We are doing we're going to do many layers, so the first layer will be a light one. And twist the, paint, the board to suit the angle. And the bottom bind. do some practice before you start drawing the prop so you, your hand getting to the motion of doing parallel lines it's pretty easy still now with this little skin that's peeling off we want to make sure that it stands in front of the onion so we'll do a bit of shading, which is a bit darker than the rest of the area, so it stands out. So we'll do a bit of skin peeling off here, we'll lightly shade that. Okay, we're going to do another layer, so it's getting a little bit darker. Light comes from this side, so I will try to leave out some highlight areas. Now it's pretty much done with the onion. So I think I want to make this probably the second darkest area, and 
its little sh its shadows around here will be the darkest, which we will do at the very end. Now move on to the garlic. So with the clove, we we'll want to do the darkest bit in the clove first. So just in between the little clove, each between each cloves. Here we can use a little bit more pressure to give you this darker line and we will thicken its outline just to show that they are not at the back right so that's done we'll shade the skin This is more textured than the onion skin, so we'll, we can use perpendicular lines that's more rough. Now we've done skin and the shadow. Do the clothes. Right. So we're almost finished with the garlic. Roughly how it's gonna to look. So, and the front one. The front one receives a lot of light, so we're not gonna shade it too much. Just a little bit here. And then. Right. Now, back to this onion. So, it does have some texture inside. So this bit is the inside part. We will follow this texture. And here the skin's dried out. We'll just use a line to represent that. Dry it out. Cool. So that's my onion and the garlic. Obviously there are, we can do definitely do more work round onion to make the skin look even smoother much there last bit we are going to second last bit we are going to do the vase the vase is transparent so you, there won't be a lot of shading but we still need to, to show some depth to it <coughs> we'll not be pressing into the paper we'll do it lightly start from the edge We can use longer lines, but they need to be quite dense. So 
So you see the lines that we made, outline that we made before will be covered. So if you made mistake before then, you can take the opportunity to correct it now with the shading. So we're just slowly building out and it needs to be a curved shape. So now one side is done, we'll move on to the other side. The other side will follow the same theory, lightly shading it, par parallel lines, and follow the direction of the curve. You can move your board around so that you can follow where the curve goes. The tip of it will be slowing down a little bit. Right. And just add on a little bit to the other side. going to do a second layer. Oh, forgot about the bottom of it. So, the bottom. The bottom of the vase will be darker. So, we will pressing a bit more. is very gradual slowly turning to around curve cross the line slightly so it creates a little bit of depth and easier to create the shadow but not too much so we still have smooth surface the handle again with this is gonna be the same as you do for the body of the vase but the edges is a little bit darker By now you should have a cleaner surface for your drawing because now a lot of our shadows have covered the guideline. And a little bit of shade here. Just a little bit. 
it and a beam on top. Right. Cool. The tips of this just make it more definite line. This is the tip of the brass. Shadow here and a bit of shadow here. Right. Cool. That's pretty much there. circle at the bottom of the vase. It's quite dark so we can draw it normally. It's a little bit just to show that the perspective. And it does have its own shading. So we'll follow that. Body. I'll continue to do a few of these lines so it gives indication that it is a round object. Okay, that's almost there. Now, with the background, we're not going to do too much of it because. I want the objects to show um, to show up more. So I will use different shading technique, um, which we're not going to make them so dense, make the lines so dense. So I'll be using just very rough lines, like this. As you get closer to the object. Obviously, they'll be darker, so I want to create this negative background to contrast with my props. So you just gotta be very careful, don't draw into the object that you've already done. other side put an in and the bottom of it all right so I think this is pretty much there. I can take the whole afternoon to make this perfect. But if you feel like mm, you've had enough of drawing with your ball pen, I think this. if you get to this stage, it is pretty much done. It is pretty much finished. And if you want to hang it up, you know, for a little while in your room, in your um, kitchen, it's pretty good drawing for a kitchen. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy the process and there will be more videos coming out from me showing you some basic tips and some easy steps to finish a painting with everyday objects you have at home. 
Thanks for watching and enjoying your weekend.